My guy Jedi says, I want to know how are we, the 49ers, number one toxic fan base. Kind of funny. And this was a video from my guy Lawrence Jackson. He does stuff for NBC Sports. He's a fantasy guy. But, you know, he's got his ear to the ground. He's definitely in tune with everything going on just in the NFL, fan bases. And he starts to run through his top five most toxic fan bases. Now, clearly, this is an off-season conversation. Uh, this is a dead period. So those are the kind of rankings and lists that you're going to start to get. But the fact that I feel that the 49ers would be number one before even getting to the number one and seeing the 49ers there, I think that says a lot about – Maybe there's a little bit more truth to it. And I get to feel it because, I mean, I talk to the fans every day. I see my timeline. I get tagged and stuff. I see how 49 fans interact. So to me, I definitely see a certain level of toxicity. But I'm like, well, maybe I'm just really close to it, right? Maybe I'm just so close to the 49 fan base, so I felt like that. But then I see him number uh, have Niners number one. And then now I want to get your perspective on this because, again, with everything that you do, and, you know, I was in a space the other day that you're hosting. Y'all talking about the NFC North and the AFC North and, and the different things that are going on with that. Not talking about 49. So you get to hear other fan bases as well. So how how much do you put into this 49 being the number one toxic fan base in the NFL? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I think that there's a level of truth to it. As a 49er fan, and I think a lot of, and the thing is, the recent events get us classified that way, like the recent things that have taken place with the team. For example, we all know the elephant in the room, Brock Purdy being the quarterback, right? It's right now, it's, there's a huge faction of the, of the, of the, of the fan base that is like, he's not the guy, or we want it to be Trey, right? So it, it, it's, it's people saying, oh, well, you're ready to give up on a top three pick. But it's like, no, like we just saw a guy win all of his starts that he finished. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it causes arguments and conversation. I think that's part of it. It is part of like one also also like when you win, you don't want to start losing. Right. Right. So like when we, once we started winning with Brock, there's a huge there should be a huge group of people that say if it's not broke, why are we trying to fix or change things? Right. I think that's really what it is. I think that also I think I think. But our, our passionate, our, our, our passion for the game also changes. Listen, we have some fans that have been invested in this for 20 plus years. And, and those are people with huge followings on the Internet. And they're, they're the older crowd. So, you know, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a give and take because it, it seems like the, young, the younger fans have a way of looking at things. And then the older fans who, you know, were, were alive for seeing everything take place with the team have have a way of looking at it as well. So um, would I say we're the number one most toxic um, no, the most toxic fan base on Twitter is the Bengals fan base easily <laughs> by a country mile. And I, and I have like some good friends who are like part of it, but like they're, they're the most, it's not even close. They, they are so, well, first of all, they never want shit. So that's the, that's the biggest thing. So once they start winning, you know, fans just pop out of anywhere. Just like, you know, they're like, they're like the Avengers. They just show up like, Oh, where'd you guys come from? Right. Like we're, you were a fan. You weren't a fan two years ago, but you're right. a fan now. But but their fan base, them getting to a Super Bowl has completely changed the way they walk, talk, act, everything. That's what it is. They've changed everything about the, the way they, they act because they now have a real winning. They have, they, have, they, have, they actually have an, like a chance at winning every year, right? And they broke that huge streak of not making it to the playoffs. But their their fan base is easily the most toxic, in my opinion. As far as like who who have, they they. They are looking for every reason to to be offended. They are looking for every reason to 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 be the underdog. They they they're dying for it. And if if you don't talk about Joe Burrow when you talk about all the best quarterbacks, you're you're you're, you're sliding them. That's a fan base that I feel is is the most toxic. Um, and I'll probably get some kickback from it, but I really don't care. Based on my interaction on the internet, yeah. I've probably been blocked by more Bengals fans than any group. And I hate, and this is from a guy that hates the Browns and hates the Steelers and hates all the teams in that division. Right. But the Bengals fans, they are. And you're very close to it. You're, you're, yes, you, you where you them. live, you're in kind of that AFC North area. Yes. And they're looking at, like, like they, they looking for every, you're a former, and they're looking for every inch and piece of locker room conversation or something to get like, every, every little bit of motivation. I, they, they, they get it out of anything. You said Skyline Chili sucks. Oh, man. It, it, it could be anything. It could be anything. They, they just, they're, they're looking for a reason to be offended. 
our fan base, we're passionate because we, we won, we lost, and we don't want to go back to losing. I really yeah. believe that's the biggest thing with our fan base. We, we went through those years where we weren't getting close and we weren't good to where we are now. And it's like, if Brock's the guy, Brock's the guy. If he's not, I'm totally cool with Trey being the guy because of what we gave up for him. If you're really a Niner fan, you want Trey Lance to be your quarterback. Why? We gave up a lot to get him. That's the number one thing for me. I don't want it to be a dead investment. I'm about making the correct moves. And, and, and if it doesn't pan out with him being the guy, we will look back. At, even if we win a title, we will simply say we gave up so much for this guy. Even if we were to win a title with Brock Purdy as a quarterback, we'd be happy. But we will, we will have given up a lot for somebody who wasn't the face of the franchise when that was the plan. 